Hello and welcome back. Time for me to take this Cinnabel out for a roam again. I will have a couple duels as well, and I think I'll also have a couple very nice kills in this video. And of course, part 2 will be about the PvE performance of the ship, because I did actually change some things, and I did improve the ship's DPS. Of course, this is not the final version of the current fit that you'll see. Again, I might actually swap some rigs out, but here you can see the current PvP fit, 941.31 cold DPS, that is not bad, a little improvement over the last version. I upgraded a couple skills, and those skills gave me approximately 30 DPS. The rest of the modules, as you can see, is the same, because in my case, this current fit is suiting the ship perfectly fine, no issues whatsoever, and surprisingly, the ship also can be tanky with, with just one damage control, because of the bonus, and you don't get to be shot a lot by other ships, because you shoot down ships pretty fast in a Cinnabal. Now, the other fit that I did have in plan is with dual webs. This is a fit that you can use against frigates and interceptors. Now, I would like to have one NOS, but my power grid says no to that because of the MVD. I can fit a NOS if I replace the MVD with the afterburner. I have the MVD on just because I need to chase down fast ships sometimes, and this ship is indeed fast. A MVD is definitely a good choice, but for a better speed tank, and for better overall tanking performance for missions, I like to use a afterburner. And of course, afterburner cannot be affected by a scrambler, and you can use the afterburner even after you are scrambled. Now for the rigs, the same good old rigs, I might actually replace one of the collision accelerators with one burst accelerator to improve the DPS, but at the moment I actually like the balance between the alpha damage and the DPS. This ship can have very good alpha with the autocannons, and I kind of balanced it out with the DPS with the rate of fire, so it is a very good combination. Now. I might actually have to use dual auxiliary thrusters and I'll replace the tier 2 rig with one because with dual thrusters I think I can get around 3.3 up to 3.7 kilometers per second with the MVD and up to 1.9 kilometer per second with the afterburner which is actually pretty quick for a cruiser and that's actually terrifying speed if you ask me. Now it's active DPS is 1.4 thousand, that is a pretty nice number. I should be able to get that up to 1.9, up to 2000 DPS actually. It's velocity 2.8 km per second with dual thrusters up to 3.7 km per second. Eventually I think I will replace that one rig for the dual thrusters because I like to have the ship very fast. It would improve the speed tank performance and the tackle performance a lot. And the 5 second bonus on the damage control also helps the ship out a lot. As you can see the active damage control resistances are pretty high up and they will definitely give you a lot of advantage in combat, as you might see later. Now on to the PvE fit. This is the this is my classic PvE fit for the ship that I actively use every day. 848.81 DPS cold. It is not bad, it's getting close to 900 cold DPS. And again, if I had dual burst rigs, that would be definitely over 950 DPS, but again, I aim for a balance between alpha damage and DPS, so far I have nailed the balance, and it's working quite, quite well, as you can see still the same rigs, and this fit actually works pretty good, 
the large shield booster is helping a lot in tier 8 and up storylines. Again, you can also make the ship a speed tank if you like, and a armor tank. Both works. The resistances, once activated, as you can see, are pretty high up. And yeah, this ship is definitely not going down easily with these shield resistances and of course with its velocity which makes it perfect for storyline missions and inquisitor anomalies and of course other PvE content. It actually can also survive being attacked in a anomaly because of its high resistance and high DPS. 1.3 km per second with the afterburner, again that would be up to 1.7 or eventually up to 1.9 km per second with dual auxiliary thrusters. Eventually I will get tier 4 rigs, dual tier 4 rigs for the auxiliary thrusters and that speed should be actually, if I get lucky, that might be 2000 meters per second with the afterburner, which is not bad at all. That's actually a pretty, pretty good velocity if you ask me. Now on to some action I guess, first kill would be this prophecy that was in this anomaly and I am approaching it, locking on, I have the disruptor on this prophecy, getting close to use the scrambler, will orbit close by and the gyros are activated and now watch the prophecy get deleted within, within less than 20 seconds. The Prophecy is definitely one of my favorite kills because these ships can be, can be very dangerous and they can also give you very nice loot. But this Prophecy is, I guess, I guess too surprised to see a Cinnabal warping in and it got deleted. That was nice. Let me get the pod if I can, let me get the well-deserved wreck and the loot. Okay, this prophecy was loaded with items. Well, that's, that was nice. I saw some C-type equipment. That's, that's definitely something that I will either sell or use in the best possible scenario. I'll sell that. Basically, 200 million isk in 20 seconds. Not bad. Second prophecy is... Well, second kill actually is this prophecy that invaded our Inquisitor and this prophecy currently taking 2.8 thousand DPS. <laughs> that hurricane over there, the friendly hurricane, is actually a monster of a ship. It has higher DPS than my Cinnabal at the moment. And yeah, that's a terrifying ship if you ask me. Again, nice loot. Let me quickly get that. Okay, very nice. Camping these Inquisitor and Scout anomalies is definitely very rewarding because you can actually capture and shoot down very expensive ships and you can make very good disc that way. Alright, let's see what I will find in that in that base. I actually I actually don't even know where I am at the moment. I just take one low sec route and I do like 30 to 50 jumps and well I that's how I look for targets let's see what I'll find a frigate hopefully it's a worm oh it's it's a Tristan all right well those little frigates can be very very tricky and I will engage in combat well actually it warped out I will give chase <laughs> I mean, you don't see a Tristan do tier 5, uh, tier 5 bases that often, so I guess that Tristan has some nice equipment that I might use. And hopefully that Tristan is waiting for me there. Oh, it actually warped out. Wait a moment. Did this Tristan actually go back to hunt me? Okay, well, let's go back to the base, I guess. Warp drive active. If that Tristan came back, then that's a very brave pilot to actually willingly come back to a Cinnabal. 
And there is the Tristan. Well, let's approach. Let's focus fire. And... That was... Well, that was one hit. That was one shot. Gotta admit, that was a very brave frigate for actually coming back. Interesting. Well, let me get the wreck. I saw some tier 7 drones. Definitely could use these. And time to warp out. That wasn't that bad. I could use that drone warp for my out. worm. That will be that will be coming very soon. That ship is very nice. Now a little bit of friendly duel on the lower left part of the screen you can see my ally ships my allied ship very dangerous hurricane 1.4 thousand dps yeah that's something that you don't want to get shot by <laughs> and well i am about to get i'm about to feel the full force of of that hurricane because well why not let's do some friendly duels and also was quite curious to see how this fit would stand against tier 8 battle cruisers because they can have very powerful dps as you can see and we are about to start okay i'm approaching the hurricane we'll aim to orbit at two kilometers okay i have opened fire i will be ready to okay well i'm taking damage damage control will be activated webs activated shield booster activated and the gyros are working. My shield is is holding out. Hurricane is taking taking damage. Both of us are using off guns. And seems like I well actually I'm winning. Okay, and that was nice. <laughs> we usually fight until the until we hit armor because our home system was under well it was under some small invasions the last couple days and we just did not want to destroy our ships too much in case we have to defend our system okay round two this time up close and we are about to start in a couple months waiting for the countdown that hurricane can be a very dangerous ship and I definitely will think twice before engaging a hurricane if I find one in anomalies. Okay, well I am definitely ready and the hurricane is also ready. Let's see how round two will go. As you could see, the hurricane destroyed my shield very quickly up until 50% and then I got within my range I got the damage control active and the large shield booster as you can see the large shield booster combined with this damage control unit is definitely a very good combination for this type of scenario these 18 seconds are very very important and round 2 is starting ok open fire Webs activated, gyro stabilizers activated, and well, we're both taking shield damage. I enabled one shield booster cycle, damage control is active, and now my shield booster will be activated. I have 1.5 minutes active boosting time, that is well enough to shoot down most ships. And the hurricane is now taking armor damage while my shield is at 96-97%. Well, that was fun. Definitely very interesting result. I actually expected my ship to get to get torn apart to pieces, but apparently this this ship is very very tanky. Now this is one of my fails. <laughs> Um, I missed that Mahler because I actually forgot to use a MVD as you can see. I had a afterburner instead of MVD and that's why I like to use MVDs a lot because they can close the distance to the enemy ships very quickly. 
Okay, this is another inquisitor. Let's see what I'll find inside of this inquisitor. Warp drive Hopefully there is going to be a nice kill. There are a couple there are a couple players in local. Okay, and what is this? Oh, it's a friendly interceptor. Okay. Lately I've seen too many blues around and well that's kind of, you know, kind of interfering with my with my roaming. But it's okay, eventually I will find one nice target. <laughs> These Inquisitor anomalies are always, always exciting to warp in, because you never know what, you never know what you will find inside of these anomalies. In this case, I actually stumbled upon a blue. I will be around for maybe a couple seconds here, because who knows, I might have, someone might actually warp in. Well, Warp the next Inquisitor, let's see what I will find over here, a lot of Inquisitors lately, what is this, hmm, a neutral pot and two blues, okay, well, unfortunately this Inquisitor was also occupied before I warped in, well, Warp I guess active. I'll warp out, well, that was interesting interesting roaming there as you could see a lot of a lot of new blues appeared a lot of allies to my alliance and corporation that kind of interferes with my roaming but again I'll definitely see what I can do about that the diplomacy might change very soon I mean I can artificially change the diplomacy if you know what I mean but <laughs> I'll see what I'll do about that and now on to the PvE bits. Now, this is a tier 8 storyline. I think this is Soldier's Way. Quite a... well, it can be quite tricky because you have these counter ships bombarding your ship with missiles. So far, my shield is holding out quite well, but my capacitor is kind of struggling. Overall, not a problem. I can keep the capacitor stable at 20% and of course I can keep the shield stable at 80% I will be focusing on the elites here because they are doing the most damage to me you can actually fit dual medium nosferatus if you have the power grid for, for them with a afterburner of course and eventually I want to use dual Nosferatus, I will have to make the cruiser engineering to level 5, I think that's one of the skills that I am missing, the expert cruiser engineering on level 5, and that should give me enough power grid to be able to fit the dual medium Nosferatus. Okay, the resistances are working as intended. With dual Nosferatus I would have around 50% stable capacitor with this C-type large shield booster. I absolutely love this large shield booster. It helped me in PvP and in storyline missions a lot. Definitely a lot better to use over the medium one, although with the medium shield booster you are going to have a stable cap but you are not going to repair the shield as quickly as with a large shield booster and I have decent and I have a decent capacitor of course the capacitor can be it can always be higher and I'll definitely see what I can do to improve that but so far we are basically flying through flying through this storyline mission I am here being bait just because I want to test out the tank, the current tank on the ship and so far it is holding out quite well, don't experience any, any issues, again you have to be careful with the capacitor, although this one Nosferatu is doing a good job to replenish this capacitor, you have to remember that it can always be 
better than I expect. <laughs> I'm always aiming to improve the, the performance of any ship that I have. Okay, now I'll go on to this Drake. Speaking of Drakes, these things... I think the only ship besides faction cruisers that I'll have second thoughts of attacking is definitely a Drake. These ships can have so much alpha that they can put a battleship to shame. One of my friends here also has a Drake and he can hit up to, with tier 3 rigs, up to 9000 plus alpha. My, est my estimate is that he can actually get a 10,000 alpha hit with the medium launchers. Let me tell you that, let me tell you something. That alpha can, is enough to actually destroy more than half my shield <laughs> on on a Cinnabal. And yeah, definitely having second thoughts of attacking drakes, because these ships can easily destroy a Cinnabal if I am not careful enough. Now, if I have a afterburner, then I would be feeling safe because speed can save you from missile damage. But I have a MVD and MVDs increase your signature radius a lot and that makes missiles hit you harder. So yeah, definitely not a fit to use against drakes, definitely not a fit with a MVD. Although, on the bright side, the MVD will give you enough velocity, so there is still going to be some damage reduction from the missiles. But the afterburner is a lot more efficient and a lot, of, a lot more effective in that case. In that situation, if you are aiming to shoot down drakes. And, well, in my case, eventually I will stumble upon a drake, and that will be fun. That will be fun. But so far we are doing this story quite, quite well. I am trying to get the attention from all of these NPCs. And I think so far I'm doing a good job in that because they are mostly shooting me. I like the AI of these NPCs. They definitely know what they're doing. Okay, time to focus on the first, always, I'm always focusing on the ships that are close by. They usually have disruptors, webs and other very nasty things like that. After you shoot them down, you should be safe and you should be good to go. Because the rest of the ships besides the elites will not carry those modules and of course you will be safe. Okay, now I'll focus on this Caracal, after that there is this elite Drake, that's also very, that's, that's also very powerful, like Drakes with torpedoes, yeah, that's, some, that's not something that I want to get hit by. I know that the torpedoes have short range, but I orbit at 2 kilometers, well within the torpedo range, definitely will have to try out to fight a drake, first a friendly drake, and after that, after I see what kind of damage they can do to my ship, then I will hunt drakes in PvP. Okay, focusing on this caracal, and after this caracal I'll focus on the drake. I'm taking some damage, but it is not that critical. Now this drake is going down. So far I like this mission and I am usually doing the tier 8 Galantan storylines because I just got used to them but I might switch to to the Caldery tier 8 just to have a little change of pace. And of course, why not? Because it might actually be might, it might actually be more interesting. Okay, next target is this what is this? A a Naga, alright, good. My frames might drop a little bit, that is because of of overheating. <laughs> I don't know why, but this game is is melting my phone. Oh my god, what the hell was that? 
this naga is going down. A caldery ship without shield is like it it will go down very quickly. Well, I am very very impressed by the Psinabal. Definitely a ship that I can recommend over a Phantasm. The Phantasm is nice, but this thing has a lot more DPS and in a way it's actually more more tanky. It definitely takes more hits. I used to fly a Phantasm. I liked it, but I think this ship is actually built more for me. I'm actually having a blast flying this Cinnabal and I don't know. A battleship ship is nice, but I definitely love my cruisers a lot more. Cruisers are just built for everything and of course you are not dependent on, on a fleet, especially in PvP. Well then, with that being said, hope you enjoyed. Again, this Cinnabal is absolutely a, a terrifying monster and I can recommend this ship to anyone. And with that being said, stay safe, fly safe, and I will see you next time.